This episode of the Beauty Industry Podcast was brought to you by Sensatia Botanicals, distributed by the Lemon Tree Apothecary. Hello and welcome to the Beauty Industry Podcast, your online support community for the professional beauty industry. I am your host, founding director of Beauty Industry, Tamara Shaw. Here we are closing the competitive gap and speaking your language. This is a platform created and dedicated to the professional beauty industry, valuing community over competition. We serve to help connect you with inspiration from industry experts, expand your knowledge through educational pieces, and bring you the latest in product and technology innovation. This is Beauté Industry. My guest today provides facials in a very unique way by combining them with hypnotherapy. Vanessa Donlan is my guest and she has been in the holistic health industry for over 25 years and along the way has worked as an aromatherapist, massage therapist and as a beauty therapist. Through creating client relationships and wanting to explore beyond traditional beauty treatments, Vanessa studied neurolinguistic programming, otherwise known as NLP and hypnotherapy, and has since added both of these services to her treatment menu. Prior to this recording, I went and had a treatment with Vanessa in her space at Serenity Skin and Body in Manly, which I talk about on today's conversation, and I was actually quite surprised by the results and to the sequence of treatment in combining a facial with hypnosis. During the consultation, I mentioned to Vanessa that I was concerned with the quality of my sleep and that getting sleep was really quite difficult for me. And since our session, I've been sleeping like a baby. What hypnosis actually is on today's episode, why hypnotherapy has been drawn to her and how it's changed the lives and skin of some of her clients. I hope you enjoy today's conversation. Here's Vanessa and I. Vanessa, welcome to the Beauty Industry Podcast. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you for having me. And likewise for featuring. Um, Vanessa, I love finding out from our guests what it was that led them down their beauty industry pathway. And I would love to know what was it for you about this industry that attracted you to join in? Okay. Um, I left school um, in 1980 quite a while ago and I actually started modeling and um, obviously I was thrown into you know the beauty industry um, if you like Um, and I was modeling for quite a while and then I um, was having um, my first baby and I thought I'm going to go and study a diploma of beauty therapy I love beauty so much I love touching people's faces and skin and I would always do that with my family and friends so I did a diploma in beauty therapy um, with the Advanced School of Beauty Therapy in um, Cremorne with a gorgeous French woman called Maggie Ruby. And um, she was amazing and she also got me into essential oils. She was French. She used essential oils in every treatment and um, it started that love of um, that sort of complementary side of, of an emotional side of treatments. Um, I also then did a diploma in aromatherapy. So that's all back, um, yeah, in the in the 80s. Mm, amazing. And so um, aromatherapy and modelling, what kind of other avenues has your industry career taken you down since since joining then and, and taking on those two really unique kind of um, pathways? Yeah, so I was um, basically when I did my aromatherapy, I then – Um, really concentrated on prenatal massage. Um, I was working, I had two hospital contracts on the North Shore and I was working with pregnant women, uh, working with essential oils, designing um, oils, little oil blends um, for women. I also designed a bean bag called the belly bag, which I worked with pregnant women with so they could lay on their tummy. And I retailed that. I then um, went into making um, fresh-faced skincare, which was a natural range of skincare. I'm talking 1998. Mm. So the natural, the organic range uh, sort of world wasn't huge at that stage, but it was kind of starting. So um, I designed fresh-faced. I had it manufactured here in Sydney 
and I started, but but also the internet wasn't around, so it was actually really yeah. hard. I I had a PR company that would do PR for me. It would go in the Saturday paper, Sunday paper. <laughs> the phone the phone would start ringing, and I'd have to send little samples all over Australia. It was it was kind of frustrating because I was a little bit ahead of my time in in a way back then. Um, yeah, so that sort of all was in the '90s and come into the sort of 2000s. And I, it was about 2010, actually, and I decided, Nick, I'm going to start a salon. And I actually bought Serenity Skin and Body, which actually was, had already been going for 10 years. So I stepped into a salon that was, was established. Um, the previous owner was beautiful. And I worked there for nine years and I had um, Serenity Skin and Body for nine years. Amazing. It feels like a whole nother lifetime ago before the internet, doesn't it? And it really only oh. was like just 20 years ago. <laughs> I know, I know. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, I, you know, there was no such thing as online shopping back then. Mm. Um, you, there was certainly no platform to actually purchase online. You could ring up someone, um, buy it over the phone, sight unseen sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, I know it, it is, it's crazy. The, it's just sped so fast over the last 20 years. Yeah, and it's funny that you say you kind of jumped on that um, natural, you know, essential oil bandwagon prior to it being what it is now, you know, with the likes of so many MLN companies and everyone's using essential oils and all of that kind of thing. It was really woo-woo back then, you know, to use essential oils and to be massaging with them. Everyone was kind of like, what are you doing and how does this actually do anything? Exactly, exactly. Um yeah, totally. And now it's it's sort of in every product, even the products you buy in the supermarket. Mm. <laughs> Mandarin oil, you know, essential oils, etc. Um, yeah, I just love that whole industry and working with them on that emotional level because your sense of smell is linked to your limbic system in your brain, which is your emo- emotional center. So that's how I used to work with them, with pregnant women as well. And I taught um, classes, prenatal classes, where I would – get the partners involved and teach them how to um, be active in a labour. So whether it be they've already decided what what oil um, they're using in labour because she's previously liked it throughout her pregnancy. So um, that emotional connection with relaxation, using it um, in her later stages of pregnancy by taking that into her labour when she smelt that smell, it would put her into that relaxed mode. So I would have the partners, um, I would teach them massage techniques and get them really involved so they weren't just sitting back watching their partner in pain. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. And um, I guess maybe a little bit of a controversial question, but now I think the world is so cautious about everything we do and you know it's it's nowadays looked at maybe we avoid essential oils during pregnancy. What's your take on that? Definitely in the first 12 weeks, yes. Mm-hmm. But after after the first 12 weeks, lavender is my go-to oil with anything. Ah, yes. Um, lavender, there's, there's half a dozen oils that you can um, use completely safely in pregnancy. Um, being citrus oils are fine, lavender, frankincense. Um, so my, my blend for pregnant women would be frankincense, lavender and mandarin or bergamot. Beautiful. A beautiful blend to use in pregnancy is divine. And once they get to 39 weeks, you can add that little bit of clary sage in there, which can help bring on, um, well, it can help bring on labour, but at 39 weeks, that shouldn't be a problem. Most women are, <laughs> most women are ready to go. <laughs> Amazing. And so talk to me about the belly bag because that sounds very cool, I guess, like when when I was entering the industry 13, 14 years ago now, you had to know pregnancy massage, but it's not so popular nowadays. As in pregnancy massage isn't yeah, popular? Yeah, yeah. I mean, may, maybe I'm just being naive, but, you know, when I entered into the beauty industry, it was kind of like a prerequisite. You had to know how to do pregnancy massage because there was do- so much day spa out there and everything yeah. was very relaxed. I guess, you know, the landscape mm-hmm. of the industry has now gone into being more medical and more medical. aesthetic and results driven. But um, yeah, I'd love to know about belly bag because that was kind of a game changer in our industry. Yes. <clears throat> so the belly bag was a pregnancy bean bag. It allowed um, 
salons to buy uh, to be able to to massage pregnant women. I know personally when I was pregnant, if I if I went to a clinic and had a massage on my side, I wasn't comfortable. And look, you might have one in your pregnancy, but I wanted women to come back to me every week or every fortnight mm. because they they were so comfortable and that's what they did. Once they could lie on their tummy and realign their spine and you could mass the therapist could massage them. Now back then when I first designed the belly bag, I was also pregnant. So my son right. is about to be twenty six. So I was also pregnant and I knew how uncomfortable it was, A as a therapist, to be massaging in an uncomfortable position and be as a pregnant woman, like if I wasn't lying on my tummy, uh, you know, don't, don't even bother massaging me. Um, so when I designed that, it was just great. And salons bought them, chiropractors bought them, lots of um, clinics bought them, day spas bought them. Um, and I've unfortunately only over the last couple of years closed that part of the business down just because manufacturing got really difficult mm -hmm. and I've got so many other things happening now it was just one thing that I just let go but <laughs> um yeah it was yeah it was it was a great um tool to be able to massage pregnant women going back to yeah some and even now therapists are scared to massage pregnant women yeah. they think that they're going to hurt them or something <laughs> Pregnant women need massage more than anyone. Mm, mm. You're not. You are not going to bring on labour. You are not going to. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah. It's as long as everyone's healthy. You know. You do your consent form as you would with any treatment that you do. Yeah. So it's. Um, I think it's an amazing thing to be able to offer. And so, um, 2010, you mentioned that you purchased Serenity Skin and Body, which had already been open for ten years, which is really a feat in its own but then for you to take it over and continue running for another nine years I mean yeah. that's the biggest applaud you can ever have in this industry I mean a 19 year old business is bananas how did you do that it was we did a six-week takeover where I came and worked with the previous owner and I don't know I just gelled with all the clients all the clients were mums probably around the same age as me we all had kids and it was just I don't know it was it was a perfect takeover of a business I um she also wasn't very technical she didn't have a computer she had the old school book but that you wrote in and rubbed <laughs> out when um she didn't have an fpos machine so she didn't have a website so I took it into the next stage of um marketing I suppose and and just running a business um it was yeah, it was fantastic. And as you know, tomorrow I've sold it a year ago yeah. and it's continued another year and we've just moved location and I'm still working for Warwick, who's the new owner. And it's, yeah, everyone's following us down to our new location and it's going to continue for another 19 years, I think. <laughs> fantastic. And so you mentioned the sale of the business there because you've gone into performing hypnotherapy facials. I'm wondering what led you to start that new journey altogether? Well, I think when you touch people, when you're in the business that we're in and you're touching people, as everybody will completely appreciate this, people tell you everything. So you learn the deepest, darkest secrets of people that you're performing a facial on or a massage on. Mm. And I, I just decided I want, I really wanted to help these people beca because I became really close with all my clients, you know, lots of them are, are good friends now. Um, and I wanted to really help them. And I thought, wow, if I could help them on a deeper level, you know, beauty is, is skin deep, right? Like if you could go on a deeper level and have the beauty coming from, from within where all their phobias and fears lie, um, clearing all of that, that would be an incredible combination of modalities, I thought. So I um, hence went and did my hypnotherapy and my NLP. And I am now, the hypnotherapy facial was a way of getting clients to taste what hypnotherapy was all about. People are frightened of it. They they only know, maybe they've only ever seen it because they've been to a stage hypnotist or something like that and seen people running around like chickens or <laughs> you know, being like a washing machine on fast spin or something like that. Hypnotherapy isn't like that at all when you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client. It's um, it's purely just a relaxed state of, um, pure, a natural state of relaxation, that's all it is, where your conscious mind moves over and your subconscious comes to the forefront. And great suggestions are, are you know, able to be embedded into the subconscious. Um, 
So, yeah, I thought it was a nice way to introduce people to it. Yeah, incredible. And so I guess for people who don't actually know what is involved in a hypnotherapy facial, I actually came down to your space and had the treatment because I saw you talking on a Facebook Live and I was like, what is a hypnotherapy facial? I need to have this if I'm going to have you on the podcast talking about it. But I guess for those who don't know, can you kind of talk us through how you start your consultation? Because it is quite different. I mean, there is elements of skin consultation in there as well. But as you mentioned that word NLP, there's a lot of that in there as well. So can you kind of explore what NLP is, I guess, in a way, and then how you actually do the steps to the facial? Yeah, sure. So, well, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And really the questions that I ask in my hypnotherapy consent form before I start my um, a hypnosis session or a hypnotherapy facial um, are NLP based. So they're, ba- they're, they're designed to trigger the subconscious. They make your conscious mind go, what? <laughs> and your subconscious go, oh, hang on a sec. Yes, I this is where this is leading. I know the answer to this. It's in, it's in my memory bank. Um, so I always try and find out there's a root cause to everything. Mm. So I always try and find out what the root cause of the problem is. Um, I have about a basic 15 question um, sheet before I do any, uh, any treatment. And it just gives me a really good understanding of what's going on for the client. But it also gives the client a few aha moments to think, oh, wow, I didn't actually think that could have anything to do with my problem, mm. my phobia, my fear, what, whatever it is. So um, there's aha moments for both the client and a real understanding for me of what's going on. After the break, Vanessa and I talk about how hypnosis is incorporated into the facial sequence and what kind of conditions can be treated with hypnotherapy. But first, a word from our sponsors. The Lemon Tree Apothecary is a national distributor of Sensatia Botanicals, a complete professional and retail range with body, face, bath and lifestyle products suitable for any spa, salon or clinic location. With a comprehensive stockist offering of support and marketing behind it, the Lemon Tree Apothecary is currently taking on brand partners and kindly giving the beauty industry community 20% off all opening orders. The full range can be viewed at their flagship store, Serenity Skin and Body in Manly, or by visiting www.thelemontreeapothecary.com. And now, back to Vanessa. So, yes, once I do the consultation, we go into the treatment room and it starts off like any facial. I cleanse, I exfoliate. So the whole idea of the facial part, yes, um, it's a nice facial, your skin will feel amazing, but it's relaxing the client. So when when the body relaxes, the mind relaxes. And when the mind relaxes, the brain tells the heart to slow down and the blood pressure to lower. So it's just putting the client already getting them out of the beta brain waves, which happen when you're active, down into the alpha and the theta brain waves. So slowing them right down and getting their conscious to kind of move over and then just to stop logically thinking about anything, just to stop thinking. Um, And then we go into, once the mask is on, we can go into the, um, I don't like to then touch the client. So I do the facial put the mask on, do a decolletage and neck massage, and then I go into the hypnosis part of it where we work with what they want to change on that day. Mm, And it's interesting that you say subconscious and conscious thinking, I guess. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with an NLP coach myself and I I didn't realise how much subconscious we don't know, you know, it's almost like that picture of an iceberg. What we see on the top is what we're consciously thinking and they're Mm. the thoughts that we know about things. You know, I know I am a Gemini, therefore sometimes I'm reactive, sometimes um, I'm proactive. You know, I I know what I'm thinking, but the subconscious is all of that iceberg that's underneath that it's kind of like ingrained patterns in us from 
cells and cells and cells and cells ago from our yeah. grandparents and our mums and our ancestors and like all of these little tiny beliefs and systems yeah. and, and values and thoughts that have been passed down through the birthing process that now kind of sit in with us in a cellular level that we don't yeah. even know why we sometimes do these things, you know. Absolutely. And, if, oh, my gosh, for me it just blew my mind. I was like how is a cell from 50 years ago now making beliefs in me and oh my goodness I was absolutely just baffled by it but yeah. your facial when I had it I have to admit I was quite nervous because I thought oh my goodness what is this lady going to plant in my mind <laughs> you know <laughs> and and what is she going to unlock in my brain because I guess it's really scary I mean that's why that's why sometimes people are just so busy because they don't want to be in their own mind they don't like the darkness or they don't like the reality maybe that that yeah, the subconscious totally. presents and mm -hmm. I think you know I was like oh what's she going to find out about me do I have deep dark demons that are going to come out but really it was you know a really beautiful facial and I guess even I just heard it a little bit then your voice slows down and you do really, you know, use kind of sedative words that it, it does kind of just put you into an instant calm. You know, I'm not clucking around the room like a chicken or anything, you know, as you <laughs> said. And, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's funny that we're combining that with facials and because I guess exactly as you said there, we really are treating a lot of clients with different beliefs and different mm -hmm. um you know theories and things that they're doing in their life and they tell us that which we are really privileged of yeah. um I'm wondering then you know are there any other treatments besides the facial which you mentioned in which I experienced that we can kind of perform with the hypnotherapy or is it is it always with a facial can you do it with a massage for example yeah, I think you can do it with any treatment. I don't like to, like I said, when I start the hypnosis part, I don't like to be touching the client. So you could do a beautiful back, neck, shoulder massage, for mm. example, and then go into um, the hypnotherapy part. Totally, you could do that. Um, I think one of the things I was just going to talk about quickly was with the conscious and the subconscious. You said the iceberg. I like that too. I like to... Um, think of the conscious mind as Mowgli from the Jungle Book <laughs> yeah. and, and and the subconscious like the big elephant that he's riding mm. right so that the subconscious being the body brain and this is where I think what you what the conscious thinks the body brain can manifest so so many um problems um health problems uh, skin problems um so many things can manifest in the body from what we believe and think, right? right? So that's that's um, something that I like too. I've got this amazing paper from Harvard University and it talks about all of the um, emotional triggers that trigger things in our body. For example, profuse sweating, for example, is mm. 100%, it's 100 percent emotional. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, so it goes down with all these things, including eczema, psoriasis, all of that, and it talks about the percentage, which is emotional. So 85% of um, things that go on our, in our body are triggered by emotions. Yes. So that's where I think as therapists we can help. And I'm not saying it's the only answer. Of course it's not. There's so many, you know, there's a balance with everything. But I think if we could help somebody with something on a deeper level, I think that's amazing, right? Mm, mm, yeah, absolutely. And it's mm. it's quite funny that you say that because sometimes I get this, um, it's not really a rash but it kind of looks like a rash um, and it goes all red and it's on my chest and it's up my neck and there's a few different mm. emotions that will trigger that. Either I'm yep. really, really excited about something or maybe I'm a bit embarrassed or maybe I'm just nervous you yeah. know, so it's it's interesting yeah. to find out kind of subconsciously what's going on in that moment that would trigger something like that to happen, you know, and it, it's funny it, that you're saying the emotion there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where I can help people learn that's about to come on because X triggers that. 
So when I'm about to be in the, in that situation, I'm going to just slowly breathe and I'm going to slowly take myself back. Because once you've done hypnosis once, the second, third, fourth time, you can go into hypnosis really, really quickly. Yeah. So you can take yourself into that space where it, you perhaps won't have that reaction. Yeah, okay. And so mm. you mentioned there you take the hands off the client when you're doing the hypnosis. Is there yep. something that you're doing? I mean, I remember you you vaguely talking, but I was out of it, you know, until yeah, I heard yeah. your kind of your click and then, then I reheard your voice. What are you doing or saying in that moment? Just before before I click? Mm. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, bringing you back just before I click I'm bringing you back up to a conscious state so getting you grounded back on the ground you feel your feet on the ground bringing you back into reality really mm, okay. and then I click my fingers and bring you back um, but I don't touch the client for a few reasons I want them to be it could be um it could be annoying to them that they may not be able to concentrate or they may not be able to go into that space that subconsciously they need to go into mm, mm. if they're touched. Um, because our they, conscious mind is thinking of the touch? Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, it could be distracting them in that way. So getting them into that relaxed state by touching them, yes, and then taking your hands away and by then they're in, they're in that alpha-theta state of brainwave where they're in a they're in la la land so um but it's interesting when you said earlier the woohoo um of essential oils <laughs> there, i love that because people sort of talk about we well, used to talk about hypnotherapy as woohoo as well yes. it's so not so not woohoo it's science and and so is essential oils when you talk about it, it's science it's science it's it's the chemical constituents of um that are in the essential oils that do physical um, and emotional changes to people. It's science. Um, and I love the fact that now even doctors, even um, the gastroenterologists, when people are now going to gastroenterologists about stomach IBS, all of the IBS, like, again, such an emotional thing as well. There's so many elements of stomach, you know, they talk about the second brain in the gut, right? Mm, mm. And I love that they're all now looking a little bit outside the square with their um, diagnosis now as well, which I think is amazing in 2019. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> About time. <laughs> About time. <laughs> and don't, don't get me wrong, I, I believe in doctors, absolutely. In fact, just on the weekend I um, held a virtual gastric banding training session. I got... Um, a the world expert trainer from the UK and she was in Australia and I held a training session for 16 hypnotherapists learning her technique what, um, two of them were doctors that came up from South Australia Gosh. one one is an anaesthetist and he um, told me he's performing four operations in September under hypnosis wow okay mm. Mm. and I just was like that's incredible yes so talk to me about the virtual gastric banding because perhaps people don't know what that is so is it hypnotherapy rather than the actual surgery yes of course yes so virtual gastric banding being um so it's a weight loss program it's a four-week weight loss program and there's part one of the sessions is the virtual gastric banding where you are taken down in hypnosis into a you know, into the hospital. You're entering the hospital. You you meet the surgeon. You know the the band is put on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you believe. So your subconscious is now believing you can't eat as much, and it's also we all go through that phase where we eat too much when we have our dinner, for example, and go, oh, I'm just going to finish my plate, or I'm just you know you've been programmed not to leave anything on your plate. There's people starving in yeah. Africa. There's you know, so that's all pro programming. Eat everything up. You'll be a big boy if you do. Yeah, you might be a big boy if you continue to eat like that. <laughs> it's it's that programming that, that has taken place. So, um, yeah, the virtual gastric banding is – so it, it, it um, allows our subconscious to tell us when we've had enough. So all of a sudden you're going, oh, I've had enough. I'm, I'm happy. I'm full. I'm content. I don't need to finish that. 
Um, so it's a four-week program, but that's a, the, the actual gastric banding part of it, where the gastric band is virtually put on, is is one part of one session out of four. Um, the rest is, um, yeah, taking you into a um, – there's a lot of aversion therapy in that where what you like and what you dislike um, – are put into your subconscious so you now don't like what you did like does that make sense <laughs> yes yeah absolutely I said to um I said to my coach a couple of months ago I said um you know I was talking about how I emotionally eat chocolate and mm. when I'm in like a crazy I call it tornado tomorrow state and I'm just like <laughs> I have a million things to do but I don't I go to 7-eleven and I go buy a bar of chocolate and I'll sit there and eat it because I'm just like so stressed about all the things that I have to do that I don't do anything <laughs> you know yeah yeah exactly um, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. she said well what if chocolate was poo and yeah. ever since I look at chocolate and I can't. And that's, I don't even know how suggestible that says my mind is, but that's great. It, yeah, it's its really wild. Yeah, there's lots, there's lots, lots of different methods you can do. You can do swish patterns where you have what you like in your, in your mind's eye, big and bright, what you dislike in the bottom left hand corner of your mind, black and white, and then you swish, you swap them, swap them, swap them. Um, so, you eventually don't see what you like anymore. You only see the anchovies with the hair on it or the slimy, <laughs> filthy oyster that you don't like or the poo or the whatever. That's <laughs> so, hilarious. Yeah, very, very effective, very effective. Amazing. And so um, we talked about the kind of the gastric banding for weight loss and mm -hmm. my treatment was, um, as I mentioned to you, because I don't sleep very well, what yeah. clients are you typically treating with your th hypnotherapy? I am treating clients with, uh, I, for example, I've got a corporate client and every time she comes to me, she comes every four weeks, I just say, what's going on for you? And she'll say, um, I'm emotionally eating. Mm. And we'll work on that for that session. Um, tomorrow she's actually coming and I know she has, she says it's a fear of flying, but it's actually a fear of, people around her that she doesn't know because she thinks they might do something bad to her right. so I'm, I'm going to be busting that sort of um, phobia in her mind tomorrow with a facial um, people come for relaxation and stress they come for different anxieties um, a lot of my clients are mums so they're stressing about their kids or mm. worried or whatever so yeah um, people that want to maybe cut down their alcohol I've done quite a few of sessions regarding that and not that anyone's you know an alcoholic but people go you know I, I really only want to drink on have a drink on Saturday night or Friday and Saturday night but mm -hmm. I find myself just because I'm cooking dinner and it's my habit that I've been doing for a year I have a glass of wine with dinner and then that turns to two uh, sorry while I'm cooking and then you know I, I end up having two glasses of wine a night and I don't want to do that so that's the thing it's breaking our neuro we need to when you're working in hypnosis you want to start to create a new neural pathway habits are created because we do it all the time our subconscious um you know we're triggered by stress it creates anxiety. We do the same path, back and forth, back and forth. Mm. So until you break that habit and do a pattern, what we call a pattern interrupt, and create a new pathway, you will stay on that same old pathway until you create a new one. And like I said, it takes about 90 days of doing something every day to create a new habit. Mm, it's difficult because we're creatures of habit you know we always do right. what we've always done and and yeah. everything that we know feels most comfortable for us I think you've just That's described right. me with the wine don't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> no I won't tell anyone it's between you and me <laughs> um, I have a funny question for you in regards to being a beauty therapist or you know you're still you're still treating um aesthetically really with your hypnotherapy facials yes, do yes. you still prescribe product at the end of the treatment yes yes I do um because essentially they're coming for their skin as well mm. so I'm always um and these clients that have have been coming to me from the hip um the hypnosis facials they're clients that have been coming to me for, for ages so they have their regime of products and if we've got, you know, they always sort of say, what, what's your new 
what oh that's that looks new I haven't got that I need that um so yes I do and if they were a new client yes I would prescribe um products for them yes definitely amazing and I'm wondering um obviously there's a lot of client confidentiality around this but maybe um if you have some and if you're willing to share some success stories that you've treated with the hypnotherapy facials yeah um well my client that I was talking to you before about her when she was saying she was emotionally eating she said I just make I wake up thinking about um chocolate Mm. so when I did the um particular hypnosis that I chose to do that day with her facial the next time I saw her four weeks later she said you know what I have not gone down that chocolate path I have not eaten chocolate in four weeks Mm. wow um I've treated somebody with rosacea and I was doing an f20 peel so a salicylic acid peel with her rosacea for its inflama- uh, inflammatory properties in the salicylic acid. You know, it's quite a strong peel to do, but really good for rosacea. Um, and I took her through, whilst I was doing that treatment, through a really cooling, calming experience where she was going through very cold water and she was splashing the cool water on her face um, throughout the the whole facial, throughout the peel. And she said now she still takes herself, if she feels herself flushing, because obviously with her rosacea, she gets, she does get those periods where it's angry and hot. And she said, I will still take myself to that spot um, and splash my face with water and I'll feel the coolness and the calmness coming onto her skin. Yeah, right. Is this why people on those crazy TV shows can sit in baths of ice water for 10 minutes and not jump out screaming like a normal person would? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You take yourself to another place. How does how's my anaesthetist friend going to perform those operations under hypnosis? That's exactly what he'll be doing. He'll be taking them to a place. Mm, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so, if somebody wanted to um, have a session with you, where can we find more about you? Where do you perform the treatments? Um, how does one get in touch with you, or perhaps another hypnotherapy facialist? Because I don't think there'd be many of you guys out there. Um, Well, I have uh, Hypnotherapy Manly is my um, business and you can look me up at www.hypnotherapymanly.com.au. I practice from Serenity Skin and Body in Manly. Um, Yeah, so and I can also do virtual sessions. So Uh obviously that's not a... um, hypnotherapy facial wouldn't that be good if we could do a virtual (laughs) facial as well (laughs) we'd all be out of jobs (laughs) yeah exactly yeah yeah. lie there you can feel my hands on your face can't you (laughs) oh no no Uh, (laughs) um no no no. so uh, i can do the hypnosis facial obviously from serenity skin and body in manly and yeah i can do sessions so for example the gastric banding can be done over i've got a client in germany so i'm doing her sessions um virtually oh you know via zoom so it's all all is possible. Anything anything is possible these days. Except what I love about our industry, the beauty industry, it's the touch, which is so special. Mm. So to be to to be able to perform treatments where you actually touch people's skin is um is great. There's so many people that need that touch as well. It's amazing. Yeah, that's very true. And Vanessa, um, one last question before I let you go. Perhaps if there is a beauty therapist or a skin specialist who's listening to this and they've got some clients who, you know, are presenting with these kind of concerns or they're hearing these triggers, where can they go to perhaps enhance their skills or, um, you know, add that level of hypnotherapy on to the treatments and, and kind of learn that, that another skill, I guess? Yeah, there's well, there's courses, but watch this space because 2020... I am going to be involved in some uh, a diploma in hypnotherapy. So Ooh. that is, um, yes, could be um, something that I could help everybody with. Wow, our industry blows my tiny mind and I love how it's ever evolving and changing, which is exactly why I've created a platform like this to share these amazing people with you so that you too can be flexible and mold your therapies. 
Who would have thought that combining facials with hypnosis would be where we end up in 2019, but it makes me just that so much more excited for the future of our industry. What's next? My mind is literally buzzing with the question. You guys know how much I appreciate your support for tuning into today's episode, but I'll thank you again. And two, there have been so many screenshots and tags and mentions across our social media platforms lately. So another big thank you so much for all of your incredible support and the love out there on the gram. I read and write to every one of you who tag us, so keep doing so and you will forever get loads of love from me. If you haven't already, help a sister out by showing your friends and your colleagues about our podcast, because as I'm sure you are all aware, we are an independent podcast and our biggest compliment is word of mouth referrals from people like you listening and enjoying the conversation. Remember too, if you have somebody who you want to hear from, you can always fill out the form on our website. Let us know who that is and I'll do my best to have a chat with them on the podcast for you. That's about all from me today. Until next time, stay connected.